Yes, sir. Ask the questions you want to ask him. Remember, you got to press the green button down and then ask the question. What was their job in the camp? In the first camp in Maidanek, there were very horrific tortures. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much work, but the idea there were five camps there, not only for Polish Jews, but for Polish Christians, for Russians, for other nationalities. And there were five camps adjoining each other, separated by barbed wire. And most of the guards there were Ukrainian. And they were extremely cruel. So basically, when they took people out, for example, to work and make roads, build roads, but they didn't do it with tractors, you know, with rollers. The human beings were the tractors and the rollers. And while they were working, trying to build these roads, they were being beaten mercilessly by these Ukrainian guards nonstop. So that was the first camp. Fortunately for me, I, by providential instinct, I found myself a job by own by looking after the little garden that was in front of our barrack. So I made myself that I was being told that I should do that. So most of the time, the two months or so that I was there, I did that. And it was only once that I was called to work this kind of nonsense work, running with stones from one place to another, and then bringing the stones back and being beaten on the way. It only happened to me once. In Skarzysko, I worked on a firing range where all the ammunition was being uh, dismantled and explode and, and the the actual uh, explosive parts were being exploded in, in 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 little in little holes it was very dangerous work but i worked with that for a whole year in chestochova Huta, i loaded and unloaded steel ingots you know what the steel ingot is it's a heavy piece that is you know they they make they it, the 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 um you, you, you take hot, hot metal, which is then thrown into squares, and then when it cools off, you we coat it off with water, and when it's very cold, you take it out of its form. These are forms, square or oblong, that weigh about five to 10 kilos, and then you have to load them onto a wagon. And we had to load two wagons a day. That was our quota. If you didn't load two quotas, two, two wagons a day, you didn't get food, so you had to make sure that you loaded two wagons a day. In uh, Buchenwald, I did nothing. I wasn't there for very long. It was um, the end, quite towards the end of the war, towards the end of '44, and uh, there was very little food. People were dying like flies. Uh, every morning when we woke up, we were in the barracks of a thousand. We would find 20 or 30 people who had died during the night from disease and hunger. Fortunately, I was then again taken to another work camp where I was fortunate to work in the SS kitchen. And then I was on a death march, uh, which I was liberated on the 8th of May. I walked from Germany to Czechoslovakia for over two and a half weeks. Half of the people that came out died on the way or were shot on the way because they couldn't follow. So you couldn't walk, then they. You were, you were shot or you either dropped on the way because you, you died because they didn't feed you. We used to drink water from ditches. We used to uh, eat dry leaves, whatever, uh, insects, whatever you could find. And then um, eventually we arrived at a place called Theresienstadt, you know, uh, this concentration camp, what the Germans called a ghetto for the Jews. And I was liberated on the 8th of May. Wow. What's your next question, Serene? Okay, um, Born in Wuj, in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was a very beautiful, tall, uh, Scandinavian-looking uh, woman, blonde, blue-eyed, slender, always beautifully dressed, and a, a, a aristocratic posture which actually my whole mother's family had. They were farmers from Gerun, but they were very aristocratic. 
and they were all tall and, and, and ext extremely aristocratic looking. So my mother had a kind of... <laughs> Go ahead, and what's the other question? I don't blame the German or the Poles, because that is a generalization. I blame the perpetrators, whether they were German or they were Polish. Wow. Oh, nice. Don't ask a dumb question. He could ask anything he wants. Are you gay? Really? Oh. There you go. You hear that? Wife His wife's name is Dorothy, so no way he could be gay. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> and be serious That's and stop it. Funny. I'm going to send this to the pastors just to remind you. Mm -hmm. I doubt it, Mom. How would he have children? I'm afraid that I cannot answer that question. I don't know. My dad, they did not have tattoos. They, they actually put numbers uh, on your, um, underneath your tag which you I had a red tag with a P in it and underneath on a white piece of cloth was my number. Can I see it? I don't know who Tupac is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> you ask him about rap? Ask him again about the rap. What do you know about rapping? I have no comment about rap music. <laughs> what do you know about hip hop? While there was a lull between January and April, uh, the talk in the Warsaw Ghetto was continuously about armament, about resistance, and what they started already killing. Kira, what's your question for him? Is your wife dead? That's a good question. I do not have an answer for that. Hmm. Oh, I don't think he can speak about death. I just don't. I think he doesn't like, like, want to say. If it's it. him, do you have children? I have three children. Three. <laughs> okay, you have three children. That's good. We hid in, I remember three or four different places. We were hidden in, in more than that, but I remember, for example, once my father managed to get a steel door, like in a factory, and which you padlock on the outside. So we would be lying under the bed. That was in the beginning when the Jewish police uh, were rounding everybody out and telling people coming down for document inspection. So he would lock us and put a big uh, lock on it, a huge heavy lock, and it was steel, uh, and then he would hide somewhere else. And once I remember that when things got actually worse, we were still in, in, in the apartment, uh, that was the last time we actually were in the apartment, they were knocking with the, with the rifle butts, you know, onto it, but they decided there were so many people anyway, we're not going to stay here, and they left us, because it would have been very difficult for them to open the, the door. After that, we were hidden in attics, behind false walls, mm -hmm. and finally in a bunker underneath the ruins, which was built in our building. Uh, the front of it was destroyed with a bomb. So they built on the corner of Mila and Nalefki was built uh, a, a bunker for about 150 people, and that's where we hid. If I ever thought of committing suicide, I never thought of committing suicide. Wow. Mm. That's a good question, though. So, you know, and then some people wow. don't want to take this. Yeah, oh, well, huh? losing your whole family and everything. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? He, listening to this man, everything he went through, and he said he never thought about committing suicide. What are your guys' thoughts about it? Be strong. That's crazy, because, I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't try to, because they're trying to burn me and stuff. Okay, that's fair. What about you, James? What do you think? Um, he's very strong. Okay. Shakur. Are you a happy person? What do you think about this? Um, Shakira asked him the question. I'm a happy person sometimes because 
uh, it is very difficult uh, when you uh, go through an experience like I did in the Holocaust that it should affect you shouldn't affect you to the extent where you find difficulty to be completely happy but you know there are happy moments like you know when my kids got married when my grandchildren you know were born my, my children were born when we have holidays that are very meaningful to me it reminds me of uh, the times that I lived before the war then I'm happy but very often I'm sad when I think of what happened I am sad wow my god goes to you Shakira asked him if he ever thought about suicide and he said no he never thought about suicide what do you think about that? What? What are your thoughts on that? Imagine everything that he went through and and still yet, you know, that was the last thing on his mind. He, he said had hope. he had hope. That's what I that's what I said. Yeah. All right. Good good answer. Thank you. Wait, it's, it's, okay. What I press? The green button. The green button. Hold it down. Okay. They asked them that. Was your hair shaved? To be quite honest, I don't always remember everything. And this is one of the things that I can't be 100% sure. I had hair in Skarzysko, but I, I imagined or thought, because I told it a few times that I was shaven when I, when, after the selection in Maidanek before I was thrown into that vat of acid. But I can't swear mm -hmm. to it, I was. So I can't really remember. That's fair and honest. Next question. Do you feel guilty that you survived? Wow, okay. That's another good one. Mm -hmm. I did not feel any sense of survival guilt ever. And I'm not sure why, but maybe because it, it, maybe because I felt that I was like the remnant, you know, the, the remnant when you when 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 you when the prophets talk, you know, about the difficulties that were in Israel and Judah when there was all these. Uh, problems with the Assyrians and the, and the Babylonians and so forth so on, they always talk about in the prophecy the remnant of Israel and maybe that's how I felt I'm not sure but that's how I felt I was a, a remnant of my family and and, 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 and I didn't feel any guilt okay. Tell why the Nazis wanted to kill the Jews, uh, I think it originated, uh, that idea itself originated directly from one person, and that was Hitler. And then he, you know, managed to surround himself with a coterie of, 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 of uh, servants and, and, and supporters who bought this idea and uh, it became the ideology of the Nazi party that you got to get rid of Jews, Jews were vermin. So you got to get rid of them. Wow. Did you have nightmares? I used to have nightmares um, regularly for quite a time. Uh, these days, I occasionally have nightmares. They are not the exact nightmares that I had, the repeat ones uh, of the Holocaust, uh, but they are frightening nightmares. And they, but they don't happen too often. Thank God they don't happen too often. Well, you know, we were from a middle class family and uh, we lived in the center of Łódź, which wasn't a small town, it was the second largest city in Poland. And um, I personally, except occasionally uh, having had my payers pulled and somebody would shout, the Jews did the Palestinian, you know, Jews go to Palestine, I never experienced any anti Semitism as such. 
in which uh, I had a very happy childhood. Uh, my parents were winemakers. My father started teaching me to become a winemaker when I was three and a half years old. I started school when I was three and a half years old. And by the age of five, I knew that I knew that the the, the uh, Old Testament almost off by heart. Did you hear and what that man just said? Read, and At five read, years old, he knew the Old Testament when by she heart. Him, she actually taught me uh, how wow. to read Polish. So I spoke Polish to my father, Yiddish to my, sorry, Polish to my mother, Yiddish to my father, and I became bilingual almost from birth. Wow. Wow.